I do things differently. You might already know that, but it's worth mentioning because what I'm about to show you is very different. More often than not, I find myself thinking about security. More to the point, I think about how I know just enough to know that I don't know enough. So what is a person to do when they find themselves in this position? The first answer is to learn more, but I need to be able to have security now and learning will take time. Now, I do know some things about security and I can even do reasonably sophisticated penetration testing on my own network. However, I also know there are much more sophisticated attacks out there. I don't want to assume that just because I can't get in, that no one can get in. This is my serial communications bridge. It's not the only way to do what I'm doing here, but I was trying to make the cheapest and smallest version of this that I could. Many years ago, I did this with lower end PCs to the same end. I know I said I was going to do a lighting video next, and I'm still working on that, but I had a few comments and messages asking about this setup, so I thought I'd do a quick video on it because it's pretty basic. What this device pairing does is fairly simple to understand, although I've had to change it a little in the last week to accommodate a new architecture for Home Assistant, which I'll explain in a moment. Previous to installing Home Assistant, the device on the left was connected wirelessly to a network where all of my sensors lived. That network was connected over Ethernet to my primary network where all of my TVs, laptops, PCs, phones, and the internet connection live. The device on the right was connected wirelessly to an isolated network where my relays, dimmers, roller shades, thermostats, and garage door openers live. The UART connection shown here is responsible for relaying data between the two networks in a way that I control completely and has no remote access capability by itself. You see, the RP2040s that these devices are made of do exactly what they're programmed to do with no other intelligence. So, the left one connects to Wi-Fi, listens for a specific type of message, and then sends only the pertinent control data over the serial connection to the right one. That one then interprets the control data and sends the appropriate MQTT message to the devices. Now, let's address the first major fault in this setup. There's two Wi-Fi networks, which means if you can break into one, you can break into the other. Except, that would be very difficult because the networks that are not my primary network roll keys every few days and they're staggered. This Raspberry Pi is connected via Ethernet to the inner network for the physical control devices and the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are disabled. There is another one of these on the outer secondary network where the sensors live. Same thing, wired connection, all radios disabled. These two Pis are responsible for rolling the network keys based on a custom algorithm every three days. I'll do a video later on how this is done, but I need to start from scratch to do that and I'm not taking the existing ones apart. I do want to take as much off of the Wi-Fi as I can, and I'll get to that when I have the Shelly Pro 4s I need to replace the relays in the garage, but for now the rolling keys is more than what's necessary anyway. With the addition of Home Assistant, because it leverages faster technology and I'm loving the response times of my sensors, I have moved the entire setup onto the inner secondary network. Now the serial bridge is only responsible for relaying commands from my web server, which I'm not actually allowing traffic to at the moment. So really, I could remove the serial bridge and outer secondary network altogether, but I plan to figure out a way to go back to the original setup and pass the commands and data over the serial bridge to the home assistant. I just need to understand the calls a little better. I know there are plenty of ways of setting up custom devices with home assistant, but I want to keep as much out of the box communication to the Shelleys as possible because it makes configuration easier when I move things around, which I do from time to time. In the next video, I'll revisit my custom thermostats and give an update on how they work with Home Assistant. Someone pointed out the generic thermostat in Home Assistant, but there are a couple reasons I did things a little differently that I'll talk about in that video. Not that it's a bad idea, but I did a neat trick that made my approach a bit easier to control the entire house with only two temperature settings. I hope you'll join me for that video, it'll be neat if you're into this sort of thing. Oh, and if you enjoyed this one, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It helps me understand what people like and tells YouTube I'm likable. Also, if you're new here and you've made it this far, you might consider subscribing. I'm always testing new ideas and trying to find better ways to improve our quality of life, usually with relays and sensors. So to build one of these is pretty straightforward. It doesn't take long to set up physically. You just wire the UART transmit pin 0 from each Pico to the receive pin 1 on the other, connect them to your computer and install the scripts. 
you can use a full Raspberry Pi if you want wired connectivity and apply the same approach. You could use a lot of different devices, really. It's the approach of controlling the communication that can cross the bridge that's crucial. I've never had luck doing line-by-line -line code videos, so if you're interested in the code for these, I'll make a generic version of mine available on the GitHub linked in the description. I'm not giving away the secret to my token generation, and I recommend you alter the script too if you intend to use it as well. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building smarter circuits.